Welcome to this lesson. This presentation was developed by Mark Durand, Crystal Lepers, Mina Kashawabara, and Bev Patterson with credits to Narendra Singh, Tom Kai Idrzinski, and Hazel Clother. This module will teach them information products, data dissemination and use. Slide 2. It is our objective. Develop an information product and data dissemination plan. Slide 3. This session looks at the information feedback side of the DDM loop. We will talk about information products and data dissemination. Slide 4. Firstly, think about how you are involved in data dissemination. What is your role? What type of data do you disseminate? How do you disseminate it? Slide 5. You need to follow several steps to develop effective information products and data dissemination plan. Step 1. Understand the situation. Step 2. Identify and assess the target audiences. Step 3. Establish the communication goal and messages. Step 4. Develop the strategy mix or communication methods. Step 5. Develop the message, information product and test it. Step 6. Implement and monitor dissemination plan. Step 7. Evaluate. Slide 6. It is important to understand the situation, know what already exists or what was done previously, before you start developing your information product. You can look at the data sources. You might highlight the most important issues. You will check if there are existing information products on the same topic or similar topics. You won't duplicate them but complement. You look at what was done previously. You can innovate or change existing products. Slide 7. Identifying target groups is a crucial part of the process of developing strategies to communicate and disseminate data. Determine who needs to hear about those nutrition surveillance results. Key target groups include public and private health care providers, professional and volunteer organizations, academic institutions, policymakers or donors. When you have defined your target audience, gear everything to that audience. The target audience is the group that you hope will both understand and use your information. Determine general information about them, such as gender, approximate age, education level. Think about what is important to them, what are their beliefs and what do they fear, and how you can best approach and reach them and when. Slide 8. Step 3 is to establish communication goal and messages. Firstly, the communication objective or purpose should reflect the purpose of the topic. For example you might be reporting on nutrition surveillance by describing trends and patterns and key indicators of maternal and child nutrition status in low-income populations. Messages might include describing changes in specific health indicators and the impact of the changes in your country or increasing awareness of a public health problem in specific groups. Think about what you want to make happen, hey, it might just be to keep your boss happy. What is the objective or purpose of your message? Raise awareness? Encourage action? Promote behavior change? Solicit support? Change decision makers? Understanding of health issues? What are we trying to do? Slide 9. Step 4 is to develop the strategy mix and communication methods. You want to choose the communication channel that best gets across your message. The one that allows you to best tell your story. You need to answer what would be the most appropriate communication channel. To reach a wide audience. To reach a specific target audience to get the attention of decision makers, to efficiently use resources, to quickly share information. Slide 10. You may want to use different methods, such as an oral presentation and a written report. They actually complement each other. What is the best method to get your message across? If you still not sure which one to use, why not use several methods? Sometimes, you may need to produce different products such as a surveillance report and a PowerPoint presentation to increase your chances or getting your message across. Interpersonal communication, oral presentation, 
is very effective but it is also important to provide a written document or report that the audience can consult after the oral presentation. Slide 11. Your Communicable Diseases Surveillance Standard of Practice and NCD Monitoring and Surveillance Plans should include templates for the information products that the surveillance system produces, and clear guidelines for the dissemination and links to action for these information products. Slide 12. Hands-on work now is to prepare your basic, routine template for CD surveillance. Use the one in the toolbox or use your own design. Slide 13. It is an example, Bulletin of Public Health Surveillance from Freck Polynesia. Slide 14. What information is being displayed? Why is it important? Where does the source data come from? Who is producing the report? Who is the target audience? What impact or action do the producers of this information product want to trigger? What are the product's strengths? Weaknesses? Do you think it will have the intended impact? Slide 15. You can use scorecard. The scorecard facilitates to determine current status according to the threshold, getting better, getting worse or stable situation. It is also useful for policy measures. The use of light colors, red, yellow and green is a good visual strategy. Slide 16. This chart shows trends of diarrhea, influenza-like illness and prolonged fever in 23 territories. It is a report of Pacific Syndromic Surveillance System. A reader will be able to answer, what information is being displayed? Why is it important? Where does the source data come from? Who is producing the report? Who is the target audiences? What impact or action do the producers of this information product want to trigger? What are the product's strengths? Weaknesses? Do you think it will have the intended impact? Slide 17. It is a surveillance report on table for a week. This report of Pacific Syndromic Surveillance presents situation for only week. If you use this table, you can answer our questions. What information is being displayed? Why is it important? Where does the source data come from? Who is producing the report? Who is the target audiences? What impact or action do the producers of this information product want to trigger? What are the product's strengths? Weaknesses? Do you think it will have the intended impact? Slide 18. It is a map with signs clusters of epidemic and emerging disease alerts on a determined month. It is a rapid landscape of the different situations. Color circles show increasing, decreasing or awaiting confirmation of etiology. Can you answer? What information is being displayed? Why is it important? Where does the source data come from? Who is producing the report? Who is the target audiences? What impact or action do the producers of this information product want to trigger? What are the product's strengths? Weaknesses? Do you think it will have the intended impact? Slide 19. Step 5 is to develop the information product and pre-test it. You have to ensure that the message is clear. You can ask your colleagues or friends what they think before to publish. Check if the important issues are included. You don't need to include too much information. Too much information kills the information. Slide 20. Dissemination of your data is important to increase awareness or raise visibility of your program and to gather support for your program from target audiences. For example, you may want to raise the visibility of your program among potential funders or to obtain additional resources, or among state and local agencies to set priorities, modify programs, or inform policy. You have to make it readily accessible to decision makers. When you're disseminating your data try to report on trends and provide comparison data when possible. Active dissemination of data is useful to inform and educate health professionals, policy makers and legislators. You need to facilitate use them. Consider whether there are any ethical considerations, transparency, and confidentiality issues. You should answer, will it help others? Slide 21. You need to share your information product. Who should know this? 
who will receive the information product. Is it appropriate to disseminate widely or just a select group? Timing? What will your audience do with the information? Slide 22. Effective data dissemination requires partnerships with organizations and individuals that can broaden the reach of dissemination and improve the overall effectiveness of communication efforts. Enhance and extend dissemination efforts to package information or to teach specific audience. Use existing networks or, and establish new partnerships. Slide 23. Your potential partners may not be in health field. For example, Mayor's League. Media. Academia and schools. Youth associations. Women's associations. Sporting associations. NGO. International organizations. Slide 24. Examples of existing networks. For communicable diseases, Pacific Public Health Surveillance Network, PPHSN. Pacific Health Information Network, FIN. Brisbane Accord Group. For non communicable diseases, Pacific NCD Network. The Pacific Monitoring Alliance for Non Communicable Disease Action, MANA. Slide 25. Because public health surveillance is oriented toward action, an evaluation should focus on 1. Whether surveillance information was communicated to those who needed it and 2. Whether the information had a beneficial effect on the problems of interest.